A lot of people ask me, should I get into cybersecurity? Should I get a degree in cybersecurity? And what would be my prospects in the future if I worked in cybersecurity? And that's a really good question. And I'd like to break this up into three different pieces. First off, what is cybersecurity? What type of education should I get? And what kind of jobs will I get in cybersecurity? So I think this is a great topic to share with other people who are getting into the IT field. And I'm going to break down each of the different types of jobs as well as what cybersecurity is. First off, what is cybersecurity? Well, the Greek for cyber basically is governing. And if you put the two together, cybersecurity, you have managing security or managing the access to the data that provides the services that makes our organization run. And any type of disruption from that, that is what cybersecurity experts do. They prevent that from happening, and if it does happen, they stop it and keep it from happening again. They also find out who did it if it's at all possible. So now that we know what cybersecurity is, should I get a degree in cybersecurity? Well, that's also a really good question because I would say it's not universally true that everyone should get a degree in cybersecurity, and here's why. I've done consulting for a lot of really big organizations as well as a lot of small ones as well. And what one of the things that I noticed with the really large organizations, they have a very large IT department that's split into two areas. The first area is going to be the IT specialists that have to do with break fix, uh, Active Directory, DNS, you know, all the different things that IT administrators do. The other department is going to be the security department. And what's really interesting is that these large companies, they don't let the security department speak to the IT department. And there's a really good reason for that. For the same reason we have checks and balances in government, we also have checks and balances when it comes to securing our data. So the security department never talks to the IT department because the IT department has access to all of the data. The security department has access to the ways to get to that data, whether it's through VPN, an outside port, an inside connection from a certain VLAN or from everywhere else on the network to accessing a shared folder on the server. So where the checks and balances come in is if the IT department has access to the data and the security department has access to the ways to get to that data, then if one of the two departments got compromised, then the other department can block that department from accessing the data simply by either closing down a port on the security side or removing the share or access control lists on the data side. So it's a great checks and balances. However, here's where the difficulty comes in for people who are new to computers and computer networking. And that is, you're going to learn a lot more from the people in your department than you're going to learn in school when it comes to how to do a lot of the day-to-day -day activities that an IT person does or a security person does. So when you go into security, it's assumed that you already know some things, such as how TCP IP works, how to fix a computer, how to install PCIe cards, how to upgrade RAM, how to switch uh, hard drives, all these different things, how to set up RAID, how to manage Active Directory. It's assumed you already know how to do that. And if you go right into a cybersecurity degree, you're never going to have the ability to work with the IT department to find out how to do all that stuff. By working with people in the IT department, you now get a very holistic view of what an IT manager does, as well as what a security specialist could also do. So you end up with a lot of holes in your knowledge, and that's not good. Because uh, if we take, for instance, a PCIe card, say you need to go to install a PCIe card, and uh, you're gonna be installing a graphics card in that PC PCIe slot. So when you go to install that graphics card, if you have the knowledge of how to do this, great. You can go ahead and install the card and, and it will start working. But if you don't have the knowledge, then you won't. So I can teach someone who doesn't have any computer knowledge whatsoever. Uh, I could take a custodian who has nothing to do with computers and I could teach them how to replace a PCIe card. They won't know what they're doing or why they're doing it, but I could teach them how to do it. However, if you take someone who has a whole bunch of head knowledge, but who has never actually handled a PCIe 
PCIe card. They have all the theory on how to do it, but they have no idea of the physical contact that you need, how hard you need to press into the PCIe slot, uh, what type of card fits into which type of slot. And that kind of knowledge is also needed. So you need that practical knowledge as well as that theorem knowledge in order to properly install the PCIe card and then once it's installed, boot it up into Windows, configure it properly so that way the person who's using it will have the graphics they need to do the job that they need. And you won't get that if you start out with cybersecurity with no holistic information or knowledge of practicality when it comes to managing computers and a network. So the people I recommend who should get a cybersecurity degree are people who are already working in the field or people who have just gotten a degree in IT such as computer information systems, where they have some hands-on that they've gotten in college, as well as a lot of theory on how to perform various different computer necessary acts, such as setting up a TCP IP network and domain name system, etc. So all those things are really needed before you get into a college or university to get your degree in cyber. So let's say you have the experience or you have the degree in CIS and you're ready to get that degree in cybersecurity or you're ready to graduate either with an associate's, a bachelor's or a master's degree in cybersecurity. What type of jobs can you get? Well, behind me, I have LinkedIn. LinkedIn.com has a list of thousands of jobs, tens of thousands of jobs for people in cybersecurity. But you know what? They only break down to about four different jobs. Yes, there are some exceptions to the rule, but there's only about four different jobs in cybersecurity. The first one is the cybersecurity analyst. Now, if you've been in IT, been working in IT, or you're, you know a lot about it, you probably know that people in IT start out at the help desk. They're taking phone calls from people, they're solving minor problems and escalating things up to higher levels for bigger problems. Same kind of thing for cybersecurity. You're not going to start out with the best job in cybersecurity. You're definitely going to have to put your time in to show your managers that you're ready for the next level. So if you are in a cybersecurity analyst job, what do you do? Well, you manage a lot of log files. You're going to be reading millions of log files. You're going to be analyzing them. You're going to be looking for patterns. You're going to be looking for people who are attempting to hack into you. And then once you find that information, then you're going to pass that information on to the next level up in cybersecurity. So the cybersecurity analyst job is not the most exciting job. It's not going to be the job that you uh, have really aspired to or want to get to as soon as you uh, get out of college. So what type of certifications out there should you get. You know, a lot of people are already working in cybersecurity and they want to move up that chain up to the engineer or the consultant level. Uh, and it's people who are just graduating, uh, just getting their degrees, you know, this program's only been out for two or three years, so not a lot of people have yet graduated with a cybersecurity degree. So a lot of employers are looking for the ITIL Foundation, and that's a UK-based certification. I personally uh, think that employers put a little bit too much emphasis on ITIL. Uh, it is a good certification. It does teach a lot of really good um, basics when it comes to best practices that organizations should follow. However, I don't think it's one of the better ones. I think uh, personally, so if you're an employer out there, I definitely recommend that you look more towards the CISSP or the SSCP from ISC squared. They're far more comprehensive. Uh, they're going to uh, definitely give the, the, the candidate uh, a much better chance at shutting down uh, a malware attack or some other type of network attack you know, going on than ITIL does. ITIL is, is more about setting up best practices, whereas uh, the ISC squared certifications uh, are more about uh, while attacks are happening or how to you know, prevent them from happening. Uh, so uh, although the ITIL is okay, uh, ISC squared is definitely a better one. Ethical Hacker is a great uh, certificate to get as well. Uh, the Network Plus and Security Plus from CompTIA are very good. The Network Plus test is a harder test. Security Plus is more about memorizing certain security terms, uh, what security is, that kind of thing. It's not as much 
um, uh, type of practical type of questions that you're going to get from ISC squared. However, the Network Plus test is a really good certification to get. It's not necessarily focused on security, but it gives you that holistic view you need in order to understand security. It talks a lot about the different layers of the OSI model and where the different security vulnerabilities can lie. So the Network Plus uh, was adopted by the Department of Defense and some other government agencies that said, hey, if you want to work for us, you're going to have to have the Network Plus. So CompTIA went in and they sort of revamped the certification to meet uh, the Department of Defense and other organizations' needs. So people who get that certification uh, will definitely know how to solve these problems. So that's a really good test to take. I think employers should look for that and candidates should look for that. But I don't think it gets enough love out there when people are advertising for cybersecurity uh, specialists or engineers or analysts. So uh, keep that one in mind. The Ethical Hacker Certification is put out by the EC Council, and I think it's really good for candidates to make sure that they understand ethics when it comes to technology. A lot of people don't know what is okay to do. It's almost like the political correctness of the cybersecurity field. And it's really necessary because you get people who are coming out of high school or coming out of college and they, they come in with all this head knowledge and what they should do. But then the first email they send out, they send it to the wrong people uh, or they uh, say the wrong words. And the same kind of thing can happen when it comes secure to security. You may end up put doing something in the wrong order. You may end up uh, tapping into someone's data in a way that is not legal. You know, these kinds of things, uh, the ethical hacker certification can help keep from happening uh, for candidates who want to get into the cybersecurity field. So I think that that is a very good uh, certification to get. Other really good certifications to get uh, that I don't think uh, are getting enough attention, but used to get enough attention in the past, are the Microsoft certifications. So the Microsoft uh, MCSE, the MCP, the MCSA, you can go to Microsoft.com slash certification and get the details on all of those. The MCSE is the highest end uh, of those types of certifications, and they come in several different flavors. One of them is going to lean on security. So we're seeing a lot of companies eliminate their on-premises servers and moving them either to a private cloud that they own the equipment in a data center cage or cages, or they just turn it completely over to Azure or uh, Amazon Web Services, AWS, and uh, they do run everything off of virtual machines and uh, an Active Directory link back to their um, computers such as their Windows 10 clients. Uh, so those all require a large amount of security. Uh, you're going to find that over 85% of all organizations are using Windows. They're using Active Directory. So you can't ignore that part of it. You can't say, you know, uh, I don't really need anything from Microsoft. We're all using Microsoft products. You have to understand Microsoft. And they not only have a very good product, but they also have very good support. This is why Linux only makes up 1% of all desktops. Macintosh makes up 4% of desktops. Guess what? 95% of the rest of the desktops we're using, they're all based on Windows. So you have to understand Windows. You have to understand Windows security. And sometimes just understanding security alone doesn't help you with Windows security. So that's why you're going to need to get at least an MCP, maybe an MCSA. And if you're really motivated, go right for the MCSE. Uh, they're very good, make you highly employable, and employers need to make sure that they put those in to their cybersecurity job postings. So that pretty much wraps up the uh, the three different categories, what cybersecurity is, should I get a degree in cybersecurity, and what types of jobs are available in cybersecurity. I hope this uh, really helps you, and uh, please subscribe to my channel. And we'll be back with more with a lot new exciting topics when it comes to computers, networking, and security.